If you plan on accessing the deep web through Tor very frequently, or if you have a heightened anonymity requirement, I would recommend taking additional steps to increase your OPSEC because the deep web is home to some of the most dangerous black hat hackers in the world, including hackers that work for three letter government agencies. Those are generally the nastier ones. And any of these hackers, if you aren't careful, could de-anonymize you. They could figure out where you live and who you are, and that really isn't something that you want to happen. Now, Tor alone provides really good anonymity, but this is only at the browser level, and it doesn't protect your operating system if you were to download and execute something off of Tor, or if code that is executed by Tor is able to escape the browser sandbox through some type of vulnerability. So if you want to have the same level of anonymity, but throughout your whole operating system, then Tails is generally the go-to solution. But Tails is really limited in practical functionality compared to other GNU slash Linux distros. It's not meant to be installed to the disk. You're supposed to run it off of a USB so that Tails is separate from any installed operating systems. Uh, it's also non-persistent. You can set up persistence on Tails, but basically the idea is every single time you boot it, it's supposed to be a fresh install. So if you do accidentally download some malware that is able to compromise your Tails system, all you have to do is shut it down, reboot it, and then it's totally wiped. It's as if you never used it and you're in it again for the first time. But you might not want to have to reboot your machine every single time you want to use Tor super securely, especially if that's not the only thing that you're doing. And this is where Hunix comes into play. Uh, now, Hunix is pretty much the same idea as Tails. It's a separate operating system that routes all traffic through Tor. But instead of booting it off of a USB, you install it as a virtual machine. So you can use it right alongside your normal operating system and your normal browser, assuming, of course, that your hardware is capable of running a virtual machine, actually running two virtual machines, because that's what you have to do for Hunix. Uh, now, it is worth pointing out that this level of security, running an OS as a VM as opposed to a separate bootable USB, is not quite as secure, because malware can occasionally escape a virtual machine sandbox and then start wrecking havoc on your host operating system. In fact, VirtualBox, which is probably the most common virtualization program that's used, and it's also the one that I'm gonna be showing you uh, today for installing Hunix, has had escape VM vulnerabilities as recently as version 6.1.16, uh, at least on Windows. I don't know about uh, like the Linux or the Mac OS versions. Um, and the one that I'm gonna be using today is 6.1.22. So it's only a few versions of differences. Again, to improve your OPSEC, make sure that you're using the latest version of your software, in this case, virtualization software, and take some time to harden your host machine. Uh, so like I said, I am running the latest VirtualBox and I'm running it on Gentoo, on a Gentoo host. Uh, so I think I'm going to be pretty secure. Now, to get started with Hunix, head over to the download page and you want to choose the version um, for your particular host and virtualization that you're going to be using. So, like I said, in my case, I'm using Linux and I'm going to be running it in VirtualBox. So go ahead and download that. And you have the option of doing a Hunix with XFCE. So this is setup already comes with a desktop environment. It's basically ready to go. Or you can do Hunix with CLI. So I guess this is what you would want to do if um, you're able to either do everything through a TTY uh, or if you want to just install your own desktop environment or window manager or whatever. I'm just going to be showing you the XFCE edition. So when you go to download it, you get a VirtualBox appliance, this .ova. So it's already set up and pretty much ready to go. You just have to import it into VirtualBox. Uh, so you would go up to File, Import Appliance, and then just choose it. And it's all pretty much set up for you already. Um, you can tweak these settings here if you want, or you can just like tweak them uh, through here. You know, whatever you're most comfortable with doing. 
Um, so you get these two separate machines. You get the gateway and you get the workstation and you have to run both of them at the same time. Uh, you would actually want to start the gateway first. So the gateway is pretty much acting like a firewall and it's what's routing all of your traffic uh, through Tor because on Hunix, it's not like you have the Tor browser, but it's not like just your traffic uh, that goes through Tor is going through Tor, uh, everything. So like if you ping, uh, if you run any separate applications that connect to the internet, they're all gonna be going through Tor. Uh, so go ahead and start this up. It might take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on your disk. And this is pretty much what it looks like when you first start it up. Uh, yours, when you start it up for the very, very first time, is going to have a prompt that comes up asking you to agree to the license terms and basically understand uh, that you know, uh, agree that you understand what you're running. Uh, so you want to agree to that and then it's going to have a prompt to connect to Tor. Another thing you'll also want to do the first time that you run it is update it. So you can start your terminal up here. And every time you start a terminal, it's going to print out all this stuff, like all the copyright, blah, blah, blah. But this is what matters here, your default password and default user, because it creates this stuff for you. The password is change me. Uh, the password is always gonna be change me every time you boot it up unless you set up persistence. Um, so yeah, that's your pseudo password. And you can change it if you want, like, you know, you could do um, pseudo. P-A-S-S-W-D, and then enter change me. Um, change me, not just change. And then you could put in a new password and bam. So now I have a different uh, root password. It's not necessary if you don't want to, uh, but just something you can do. And you also want to update. So sudo apt get update plus, and then you also want to do a dist upgrade. Uh, so do that to your gateway first time you run it and also do it to the workstation, which I should probably start getting booted up. All right, I'm gonna move this to the second window. Um, and you wanna always, always start the gateway before you start the workstation. Um, just at least get it to the point where the desktop loads, like that's good enough. All right, I'll pause the video while the desktop starts or the while the workstation starts. All right, so I have the Hunix workstation up um, and you wanna do the same thing. Open up a terminal and it's gonna print out all the same stuff and same default user and password. You can change it if you want, uh, but definitely make sure that you sudo apt get update plus dist upgrade. And when that finishes, it's gonna prompt you to reboot. Reboot the gateway first, if you haven't already, and then reboot your workstation. So now you're ready to get started. Uh, everything is going through Tor, like I said. So like if I ping, um, or actually not ping, if I curl ip.me, so everything is gonna be using Tor IP addresses. Uh, you have the Tor browser installed. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only browser that comes with uh, Hunix. Let's see. Yeah. So this is your Tor browser. You also want to update Tor. So it'll prompt you to uh, restart to apply updates here. Uh, but you have a few other applications. You basically have everything that you would want if you're browsing uh, the deep web a whole lot. So like, let's just go to all... Um, all the XFCE stuff. So like, of course you can customize uh, your appearance. Um, we've got application finder and yeah, desktop displays. You've got the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. So Bitcoin still used uh, pretty commonly on the deep web, but more importantly, you've got the Monero wallet, which is probably use more frequently on the deep web now. Uh, so there we go. And we'll just go ahead and close these. 
and we'll close Electrum. Not too many applications, because again, you want to uh, try to keep things as simple as possible. You've got KeePass XC, you've got Hex Chat, you've got GNU Privacy Assistant, uh, more XFCE stuff, repository. Repository is basically where you could just configure which um, repos you want to get uh, your packages from, all that good stuff. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, simple text editor, Tor browser, firewall settings, VLC. Wish they would have given us MPV instead of VLC. Um, yeah, pretty much just your standard XFCE desktop with a few applications that you would want to use with Tor. And we can also see uh, what we're fingerprinted as. on tour and you'll see that it's the same as a um, regular, uh, just a regular tour browser. And you can also use full screen if you want. There's no um, like OPSEC problems with that. Well, there hasn't even really been OPSEC problems with maximizing tour either for a while now. Yeah, so you can see everything is really generic, gives you a tour IP address. And then, of course, since this is just a VM, I can always just switch to my real machine, my host machine, uh, and then do whatever I need to like outside of Tor. Uh, so yeah, this is a really good way to do both of those things uh, at the same time without like trying to compromise your OPSEC by maybe using Tor just directly on your host machine. Um, now, as far as my specs go, like I've only got 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, and where's the show? Yeah, my processor. And I'm able to run both of the VMs and I'm only using about six, about half of my RAM, you know, about 6.5 gigs. Uh, so yeah, like this is, this is pretty reasonable. I'd say as long as you're using a desktop or even if you're using a modern laptop, uh, you should pretty much be good to go with Hunix. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment for the algorithm and have a great day.